In another video a few months ago, I talked about appliances that you should buy if you want something built to last. Well, what happens if you have an old appliance that is built a little too good to last? Is there ever a point that something like this can run too well for too long and cost too much money in electric bills? I don't know. So we're going to actually test that theory over the next week. I have three refrigerators here out in front of my shop and then another one that's our staff refrigerator in the back. And what we're going to do is we are going to take kilowatt meters and test the electricity on each and every one of these units to see if we can prove whether or not it's okay to upgrade. Now on this test, we're doing this for refrigerators rather than washers or dryers, because no matter what kind of fridge you own, they run all the time. In fact, they run so much, you should go out and catch yours. Now here are the four refrigerators we're going to start this video out and test. First one we have up is my grandma's General Electric 1950 refrigerator. Now my grandma and grandpa got this as a wedding gift back in 1950 for the tidy sum of about $99. It's been in the family ever since and when my grandma passed away, I got this from the estate sale because apparently no one wanted it despite the fact it still works and I always remember it being on my grandma's porch full of soda pop so we're going to use a lot of soda to do our tests today. The next fridge that we have that we're going to test is a brand new or almost brand new 2022 General Electric 28 cubic foot refrigerator. This has all the bells and whistles. It has the flex zone door in the middle and it has the LG patented ice maker in it. The other fridge that we have, which is probably what you may have in your house, and it's what I actually had in my house uh, until I upgraded just a few months ago, is a 1999 Frigidaire 18 cubic foot freezer top refrigerator. This is kind of one of the standard ones. The one we have here still runs, but it's kind of long in the tooth. Another refrigerator that we have that we're kind of testing out, kind of not testing out, is a 2018 Whirlpool freezer top refrigerator that is also 18 cubic foot. Um, it's our staff refrigerator, so we're not using the same set of scientific tests. So it's kind of, it has an asterisk mark beside it on how it's going to handle, but it's going to provide a great baseline for our tests. Here's how we are going to do the tests today. Before we plug them in, we're going to fill them full of pop and water. We're going to fill them each with four cases of soda pop, two gallons of water, and then 12 bottles of water in the freezer portion. All these numbers are based off of what I could manage to fit in my grandma's refrigerator and we're copying it through all the designs. The idea here is it's going to force each of these refrigerators to cool down properly all in the same amount when we start running these tests. Then we have about a three liter pan of water we're going to take out and replace every single day as a way to introduce something new in the refrigerators that have to cool down each and every day. They're going to take our measurements each day and then at the end of the week see what the difference is between all of these refrigerators to see if it really makes sense to upgrade from grandma's old fridge to something new. And we're going to do this each and every day and then I'll throw in a few ideas as we go. And I'd highly suggest buying your own kilowatt meter to follow along with us to see how many watts your refrigerator uses over the course of seven days. I don't know what the tests are going to reveal. I've never done this before, but let's see what kind of stranger things we can see between these refrigerators and these tests. So we've gotten through the first day now, and here's where our refrigerators stand at in terms of electric usage. Our 1950s GE refrigerator registered 1.6 kilowatts of usage. The large GE 2022 refrigerator has used 2.6 kilowatts. The 99 Frigidaire has used 3.2 kilowatts of consumption. And then the one in our staff room, the 18 Whirlpool, has used only 600 watts in its first 24 hours. But that one isn't scientific necessarily. Now, all these refrigerators have used a huge different variance of wattage, and let's go over why that may be the case. Well, the one we did not load up with a whole lot of soda pops and water and throw a bunch in the refrigerator too. That one is kind of like our standard refrigerator, which is probably close to what you may get at home when you're not loading it up, and it by far used the least. The next one, surprisingly, that used the least was our small GE refrigerator. It sounds like it's come out way better, but there is a catch. It is by far the smallest refrigerator of all the ones that we are testing. 
it is only an eight cubic foot refrigerator, which is a fraction of the size of this giant monster 28 cubic foot refrigerator. The larger the refrigerator is, the more cooling it's going to need to cool everything down and then maintain operational temperatures. So generally when manufacturers talk about consumption, it's based on the size of the refrigerator. So again, we have a eight cubic foot, a 28 cubic foot, the Frigidaire is an 18 cubic foot, and then the one in our staff room is another 18 cubic foot refrigerator, so it used way less despite being the same size as this Frigidaire. Now, another thing to also note is the 1950s refrigerator, it is not cooling the greatest down after this first day. The bottles of water in the freezer compartment aren't actually frozen all the way. Now, I used a multimeter to test to see what it was doing, and it's actually running cold enough, but it just seems like it doesn't have the heat capacity yet to freeze everything, but we'll continue to watch this over the next few days. Now in the GE refrigerator, it's doing really, really well. Everything's actually uh, frozen underneath like we wanted it to, but the refrigerator portion, it's not cooled down quite where we'd want it to be. It's running about 42 to 44 degrees in the refrigerator cabinet, but on a newer refrigerator, most manufacturers are going to tell you that you have to wait about 48 hours before it properly cools. This is because the compressors in these tend to run a little bit longer than an old style refrigerator would to get everything cooled down properly. So that's a reason why you don't get ice in your refrigerator uh, as soon as you plug it in. A lot of customers hate that fact, but it takes time for these newer refrigerators to cool down. They don't run as hard as old units, but they run longer, which is one of the secrets to why they run it more efficiently. Now, with all that being said, let's go ahead and change the water out in all three of these refrigerators up front and see what happens the next day. I think I'm gonna go grab a pop first from this one. So now we are at day two in the books, and here's where we're at with refrigerators. The small but ancient 1950s GE refrigerator has only used 2.4 kilowatts of electricity. The Frigidaire, the 99 Frigidaire, has used 5.4 kilowatts of electricity. The 2018 Staff Fridge has only used 1.1 kilowatt of electricity. And then the 2022 GE refrigerator has used 4.5 kilowatts of electricity. We're still seeing huge variations. The staff refrigerator is definitely doing the best, but again, we aren't loading it down and this is kind of expected. I started this video on a Thursday and it's now Saturday at our shop, which I'm usually not here for the full day and we're not gonna be here on Sunday. So we're gonna go ahead and replace the water again today on all these refrigerators, but we are not going to come in on Sunday. We're gonna let these fridges rest. We're not changing the water. So the amount of electricity you should drop during the weekend for the two day period. Before we leave the shop, the reason really I wanted to do this test is to kind of show off my grandma's 1950 uh, GE refrigerator. And when I decided to do this video, although she passed, my mom was one that got some of the stuff from the estate and was like, Ben, make sure that when you show this refrigerator off, show off the original instruction manual. So I actually have the original uh, 1950 GE refrigerator instruction manual here. It shows that this is an eight cubic foot capacity refrigerator, not a six or 10 model. And if you're interested in seeing a vintage refrigerator, I'm gonna actually scan this in for you guys and you can go ahead and read it with me in the description just below where the video is. So make sure to download that and see what kind of wonderful stuff this was in the 1950s. I remember it being on their patio when I was a kid, uh, relegated to soda pops like it is right now. That's why we're loading them up with pop because I set this one up practically the exact way I remember it as a kid in the 1990s. And again, may as well show it off in a video, right? So I will see you Monday. So now it's Monday afternoon. This is our fourth day of tests so far. And here's where we're at with the consumption on the refrigerators. The 1950 GE refrigerator has used 3.6 kilowatts of electricity. The 2022 GE refrigerators used 6.3 kilowatts of electricity. The 1999 Frigidaire refrigerators used 7.6 kilowatts of electricity. And then finally, our staff refrigerator is only at 1.7 kilowatts over four days. Now, one note about these refrigerators, when we went to change the water in this Frigidaire 
on Monday, the uh, thing of water actually froze, so we had to turn the temperatures up a little bit. You'll notice where I put it in all the videos in the refrigerator, it's right below the uh, air duct from the freezer to the fridge, so it took up a little bit of extra cooling capacity, so we are turning the refrigerator up. It's getting, gonna get a little bit warmer, but it's still running really, really good but it's definitely in worse place for uh, energy consumption. Now, when I left over the weekend, one interesting thing happened. Uh, our staff actually got a new refrigerator in and I wanted to go ahead and start throwing in the tests. We have a brand new Whirlpool 2022 refrigerator that is 21 cubic foot. It's almost identical. It's a little bit larger than this Frigidaire, but I wanted to throw it in on the tests. Now this is identical to the staff refrigerator almost, but we're actually throwing all the tests at it. So it's now scientific. Now we've gone ahead and loaded this refrigerator with bottles of water, jugs of water as well in the refrigerator and a bunch of cans of pop. I had to steal some of Greg's caffeine free Pepsi. So I apologize to Greg. We'll put a few different things in this refrigerator when we run the tests. And since how these YouTube videos are edited, we're going to bring it up to day four, this Whirlpool refrigerator with the rest of the units. At day four, it's only used 5.2 kilowatts of electricity, and we have gone in and swapped the water every single day like we needed to, to make sure it matches every other refrigerator's experience in this set of tests. And probably by now you're wondering, why in the world is the GE refrigerator the oldest one using the least amount of electricity? This test is to show how efficient new refrigerators are, and it's, well, it's matching this Whirlpool right here. Why would that be the case? Well, the catch is that refrigerators use a significantly different amount of electricity based on how large they are. And here's the catch. The old refrigerator, even though it's a little bit noticeably smaller than the newer ones, the internal carrying capacity, according to the manual, is only eight cubic foot. So it's less than half the size of any other refrigerator in the tests. So when it comes to efficiency, you have to rate it not by how many kilowatts it uses, but how large it is in the internal capacity. We've loaded all these refrigerators with the identical same amount of water and soda, um, although it's a little bit different in this whirlpool here. And despite the fact we've loaded them all the same, they've used a significantly different amount of electricity. That's why the old refrigerator has done a little bit better than expected, but that also shows you why this Frigidaire here is not doing that good, which is probably more common to what you may be considering replacing as opposed to something that old, that ancient, and quite frankly, that small, because it is two and a half times smaller internally than this Frigidaire right here. We are now on day five of the tests. And on the screen, we're gonna show you exactly how many kilowatts each of the four refrigerators out here have used, as well as the fifth one in our staff room. And at this point, the tests are kind of going about where we should expect the numbers are going up very similarly among all of the refrigerators. And they haven't really changed much from yesterday. Now, instead of just going over the numbers each and every single day and making this boring, one thing I did at the very start of this was I went ahead and ordered an IR camera for my phone. Now, my phone blew up literally in the process of making this video, so I had to get a new phone as well, which is why we're doing this on day five and not day two. And I did this because I wanted to try a few different theories that I had about how these refrigerators operated in terms of cooling. So let's go ahead and look at what this IR camera looks like, although the frame rates just got awful on it. Using the IR camera, we can see changes in the temperature on each of the four refrigerators. The old GE has or is around 70 degrees Fahrenheit on the front of the unit. And as we open it up, the temperatures vary a little bit on the inside based on location. Sadly, the display on this IR camera doesn't show the temperature overlay for some reason, but you can see the darker colors on the ice area by comparison to the rest of the refrigerator. The new GE refrigerator runs about 73 degrees on the outside, which tells me that the insulation is a little bit better on the newer refrigerator. Of course, it should be keeping the cold air inside, although the areas around the door seals are a little bit colder between 5 and 7 degrees Fahrenheit. Now on the 1999 Frigidaire here, this is where things get bad and this is important to know on older refrigerators. You can see that there's a major leak on the IR camera between the gaskets. This is probably one of the reasons that the refrigerator is consuming the most electricity and as time goes on, most average refrigerator gaskets will see some form of leakage. Now you can test this to see if your gaskets are good by putting a piece of paper in between the gasket and the refrigerator door housing and see how easy it is to remove the paper. If your refrigerator door gaskets are in good shape, 
Removing that piece of paper is going to be a little bit difficult, but if it just falls out or it's very, very easy to remove, then your seal isn't the best. You want to consider resetting the seal on your door with a hair dryer, buying a new seal, or just giving it a good cleaning. And of course, make sure your kids shut that door and there isn't any frost on the seals. Finally, the new Whirlpool refrigerator is the exact opposite on this IR gun. The doors are actually kind of warm in between, and that's because of some of the differences between a modern refrigerator. It uses waste heat from the copper condenser coils to generate heat to keep that door clear and frost free without using any electricity. And that's one secret that modern refrigerators use to use less electricity. So we're at day six now, and here are the numbers for all five of the refrigerators. And one thing you're gonna notice now that we only have one day left, this Whirlpool refrigerator is definitely doing the best of all the refrigerators. And something I wanted to talk about before we close this video out with only one day left is how in the world does a new refrigerator like this use so much less electricity than an older refrigerator? Well, let's talk about it for a minute or five. You see, each and every one of these refrigerators operate using the same sets of principles. Liquid refrigerant expands into gas in the metal tubes in your refrigerator. During this process of evaporation, the temperature on the coils rapidly drops. Now, evaporation causing temperature drops was documented nearly 300 years ago by Edward Collin, I mean, William Collin, in 1755, then Benjamin Franklin and John Hadley in 1758. You can experiment with this exact same principle by taking a can of, say, air duster and turning it upside down and pushing all the propellant out of it, as most cans actually have isobutane, which is actually a refrigerant that you can use to test this theory. Now, what Benny Franklin didn't have in 1758 was a way of taking that evaporated liquid, which had turned to gas, and recompress it back into liquid. This is where the compressor in your refrigerator comes into play. Once the heat has been exchanged in the evaporating system, it's compressed back into a liquid, which causes the refrigerant to expel heat absorbed in the refrigerator through the black typically black condenser coils on the back of the refrigerator near the compressor. This cycle repeats again and again silently hundreds, millions of times over the course of the refrigerator's life, and that's how modern refrigerators work. Now, someone in the comments is definitely going to say, Ben, not every refrigerator uses a compressor, and that's true, because if you go to Amish country in Ohio, you're going to find propane refrigerators where they use the heat of propane to condense and liquefy other gases, which is how the original refrigerators in the 1800s worked, but 99% of the time, your refrigerators are gonna have a compressor exactly like this one in your house. So let's talk about some of the other tricks that these use despite using very similar compressors. Newer refrigerators add fans to both the condenser and evaporator system to move air over the coils rapidly to make sure that the heat is absorbed in the freezer portion and then expelled much more rapidly in the condenser portion, making everything more efficient. But of course, fans use electricity too, so the most modern appliance refrigerators use variable speed DC fans in their operation, and when you open the door on your refrigerator, it's going to shut off so that the cold air isn't blown out of the refrigerator, wasting valuable electricity or cooling capacity. Now, as you saw in the old GE refrigerator, ice is building up terribly around the coils which surround the ice box. Eventually, on any refrigerator, this will have the same effect as dirt on the condenser coils underneath. Heat will not be absorbed in the coils, and the refrigerator won't operate. This refrigerator has no defroster in it, but any modern refrigerator will have a built-in defrosting system. The defrost heater is hidden away behind the view, behind the evaporator panel, that it secretly runs once every 8 to 12 hours. And this takes away any ice or snow buildup in your refrigerator. Now, most refrigerators can do this every 8 to 12 hours, but on a super more modern refrigerator like this Whirlpool or the stainless steel GE, they have what's called an adaptive defrost system. This is why they have computer boards in them. The computer board will detect when the door is open, like this one is, and it will run a timer so that once the door is open for a certain amount of time, it runs the defrost cycle because it knows that there's a certain amount of moisture that's probably frozen on the coils. The older refrigerators, like the Frigidaire, over here on my right, it has that mechanical timer and it runs the same predetermined amount every day, usually about 15 minutes every 12 hours. This is less efficient because it uses more heat, which is very electrically expensive.
And one interesting thing about the defroster is that the defroster takes so much electricity. This is generally why the more modern refrigerators use a lot more electricity on paper than the older one. Typically, the way that Energy Star and these other companies rate electric usage, it, it jumps the electric bill 20 to 30 percent by running the defroster just to keep your refrigerator frost free. So electricity usage actually skyrocketed when they introduced the system into refrigerators. Another thing we saw, the insulation, which keeps the cold air in your refrigerator and the warm air out has improved significantly over the years. Insulation improvements have helped make refrigerators carry more food versus their size. Only 32.5% of my grandma's refrigerator is available for food. Whereas the newer GE can hold about 60% of its volume in frozen or fresh food. So there's been a huge increase in usable capacity, which is a benefit of the insulation. Not only does it keep the cold air out, but more food in. Another trick on these units is the compressor itself. Newer refrigerators have variable speed or multi-speed motor systems that run more often, but at a lower speed, making them more efficient based on the need for cooling capacity. When the compressor runs on one of these newer refrigerators, they only run about 70 to 100 watts when they are in operation, whereas the older GE and even the Frigidaire pulls over 200 watts on a one-speed compressor to cool down on the inside. There are other tricks that are used on a lot of modern refrigerators, but these are some of the major ones that allow them to be a whole lot more efficient. Now, at some point, I'd love to hack apart my grandma's 1950 refrigerator and show you all the ins and outs of it. And if that's a video you'd like me to do, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I don't want to do anything that you, you, know, you aren't interested in. Now let's change the water one last time in all these refrigerators to see where our numbers finally stand at the end of seven days. Here's where we're at with each of our refrigerators. Our staff refrigerator used just 4.6 kilowatts without changing the giant tray of water every day. My grandma's old 1950s GE refrigerator used 6.5 kilowatts over the seven days. The 2022 Whirlpool refrigerator used seven kilowatts over the course of a week. The 2022 GE refrigerator used 11.7 kilowatts during our tests. And then finally, the one that was worst off was our 1999 Frigidaire refrigerator, which used 13 kilowatts during the course of the seven day test. So the whole point of this video was to look and answer the question, is it worth replacing your refrigerator? Over the course of the week, we found that the Frigidaire refrigerator, which is probably something closer to what most people are going to deal with than a 1950s fridge, it used six more kilowatts of electricity over the seven days than the Whirlpool that's right beside it. And the Whirlpool is about 20% larger than the Frigidaire refrigerator. So there is quite a bit of savings here. Over the course of a year, if this test was accurate, which I think it's going to be accurate, maybe the amount of kilowatts used is lower, but I think the variance is going to be the same no matter what. Over the course of a year, that's going to save you about 312 kilowatts of electricity. But how much does that mean? Well, depending on your household, that means you're going to save anywhere from $50 to $100 per year by upgrading to a new refrigerator. Now, if your refrigerator's older, like from the 1980s, the consumption numbers actually skyrocket, and I wish I had a much older refrigerator to test this video beyond the Frigidaire. According to ASAP, the savings nearly doubles if your refrigerator is from the 1980s, like I am. Our 1999 refrigerator uses about 700 kilowatts annually, and it would use about 1,000 to 1,400 kilowatts if it was actually made in the 1980s. And as long as the Whirlpool refrigerator lasts seven years, then it's going to pay itself off. But let's be serious here. It's a major ask if that Whirlpool refrigerator is gonna actually survive seven years. Um, I have like five of them in my shop most weeks, and a lot of them are broken to the point that they are not easy to fix. So the reality is for the people that are watching this video, see if they should upgrade the refrigerator, Really, the corporations are the ones that need to watch this video just the same. People would have much more reason to exchange their old refrigerators out for a new one if they lasted a longer amount of time. Most corporations think that a refrigerator should last between 7 and 10 years. I think that's a bunch of BS, to be honest. A refrigerator should last 15 to 20 years, and then you would find a lot of savings for the consumer, both in terms of electricity, but not creating a giant landfill of waste full of damaged refrigerators. 
Now, in my personal situation, I did upgrade my refrigerator from something kind of similar to this Frigidaire, and I am saving a lot of money, and there's a lot more capacity, which my family likes. So it made a lot of sense for me to make the switch in my situation, but in a world where people are looking for an answer of boxers or briefs, the hard truth is, it depends. There are tax incentives out there for most governments, and that changes the value proposition, but it shouldn't take the government giving you a discount to switch your refrigerator. It should be confidence in your refrigerator that you're getting something nice and new, which may not be the case for every refrigerator. Again, this fridge outlasted my grandma and it may outlast me too. Now, in the case of this refrigerator, it didn't use a whole lot of electricity, so it may be okay to just let stand on a porch for a little bit longer, although probably shouldn't run it all the time because it is really inefficient for the small size that it is. But, you know, I'm gonna keep this refrigerator around because it's all I really have left of my grandma now that she passed away a year ago and this is what I got in the estate. I hope you like this video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you have any questions, we'll go and answer them. And I may have a link to what I got in the description because it's somewhere in between a mechanical and a new fridge. Kind of the best of both worlds in my opinion. Have a great day. Bye.